So, welcome to Toronto, cool. and uh, congrats on Surrender, doing yeah, really thanks, well, man. great song. Thank you. So, yeah, you guys didn't always start off as an EDM act, you were more kind of an alt-rock pop band. Mm -hmm. How did the transition into EDM kind of come about? Um, I mean, it really started for us, because we always produced our own music, you know, record our own stuff, mm -hmm. and then we kind of just got into uh, remixing, and uh, our original stuff became more electronic-based, you know, and then I guess it was really through our remixes started taking off, and then... That was like, it became a, a really cool outlet for us to do, like in between doing regular shows, we start DJing and stuff, and then we kind of just, our originals just kept leaning more electronic, more dance oriented and stuff. Yeah, it was easy because we grew yeah. up producing, so yeah. it wasn't like we had to like learn how to figure that out, it was kind of just yeah. like, we know how to produce, we know how to write, and then we just put it together, and it was just fun when we started working with different yeah. singers and um, collaborations and features that kind of just like took it to the next level. So you would say it was kind of like a natural progression. Yeah, that's for sure. Because yeah. like we were always electronic, you know, yeah, it's not you, like we were like a metal band. Yeah, no, you were pop, pop yeah, electro. It was like dance. You always had the electro elements, exactly. For right? sure, for sure. Electronic drums and the synths exactly. and all that. The same, and then we just yeah. kind of like the guitars kind of just went away. And But you know what? We always try and like keep it musical. Like if you, if you, yeah. you can tell in our music, it's not all rhythmic. It's a lot, it's very like melodic and exactly. um, we use a lot of harmony and we uh, did an acoustic version of Take Me Home too, which yeah. kind of showcased the whole, you know, different, different side of you guys. Yeah, yeah. And it was cool. Yeah. Acoustic guitars, so and piano. You, yeah. And so what, was the transition difficult or no? Like from pop to EDM? It was easy. Uh, yeah, it was pretty yeah. easy. I mean, for us, it was like we just kept writing songs that we thought were good, you know, and it was cool. Yeah, like you said, working with different singers and stuff, really like. Uh, expanded like our songwriting capabilities yeah. and all that stuff too. like when we were as a, as a band we felt like we could only go so far like just like with like um, trying new things it's like now we're working with like you know different rappers and, and singers like we did a song with John Rezik from the Goo Goo Dolls yeah, that was exactly. cool that um, it's just been great yeah it's been awesome and so where did you guys learn to actually you know like DJ and mix like live we talk, is that self taught or? yeah we kind of self taught we yeah. started yeah we basically just you know we started doing some like low key club gigs in New York City yeah um more doing stuff and then did the sound cut out a couple times yeah, yes. yeah there's there's some things you know and then yeah we got lucky like early on um we had a uh, one of our first like i guess releases i would say is like uh edm you know thing was like we got signed to spinning like mm -hmm. they put it yeah, out real quick so we went over to amsterdam did a couple shows there yeah. early early which was like really really educational for us because yeah. it was like that was like straight up you know club crowd yeah. that helped so, the transition yeah. too where we could kind of like see like what was working in the mm -hmm. club world and kind of like so spinning kind all of eased you into sure. yeah definitely got us yeah. and you also had support from like Hardwell and Nicky Romero yeah, 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 right. right so talk about how they kind of helped the transition the, that whole situation is awesome because you know like it's, a, it's just a good example of like if you work hard and like make music that like is like you know competitive like it will find its way yeah. you know into people's ears and that's what it was like we were just like sending random you know emails to them hardwell and yeah. like with random songs like check out this remix check out this song and then um you know let's blind emails then all of a sudden then yeah. putting it in the radio to them or their labels to uh, just like their their, their you know, both email. like okay, yeah. like just like the you know where any email we could we could find at the time when yeah. you're sending mass emails out to yeah. like all the blogs and all and that just stuff just hoping back, that yeah. someone's gonna play it and for years, it was just like nobody answers your emails. Yeah. You know, you don't, you know, you don't get any blog love. You can't get yeah. a song on the high machine. Yeah. And all of a sudden, boom, one day, it just click. takes one. Yeah. And then we started, you know, they, we started hearing our songs yeah. in like people's sets, like Hardwell's dropping our uh, Corella Pro remix, and, uh, remix, yeah, Ultra. We heard that, and it just kind of like started to snowball after that. And mm -hmm. we uh, we try and do the same now for other upcoming DJs mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, do people send you stuff? For yeah. Sure. Yeah. And we listen to, it. we put yeah. stuff in our. In our radio shows, because we, you know, now that we have a little bit of influence in that community, it's, exactly. it's like other the least out. we could do. Exactly. So, you know, you, when when you guys entered the EDM scene, you kind of got your name out there really quickly. You know, it wasn't long before you were playing like Tomorrow World, these huge festivals, EDC. So, how do you think you were able to get your name out there and get that, you know, dance community into your music so quickly, being like newcomers on the scene? Um, I guess we just, I think, you know, from from us like just being, I guess, doing music for so long, we kind of. You know, we're really focused. We're like, listen, we're gonna take it. You know, here and here. We had a really good manager, and we linked up with a really good agent. Like, try to get that going right away. And then, yeah, just kind of, it was all about putting out consistently good music. I think to get. Yeah, and I think because there was three of us too, yeah. so we were, you know, we were, we were shooting out a lot of remixes, a lot of original music, and like keeping so up with the ra radio shows. Yeah, and just yeah, staying like vocal as much as we can on Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff, Facebook, and just putting out content that we yeah. really support. Yeah. And you guys, you know, you had a label, then you went the indie route for a while, you know, just kind of yeah. pumping out stuff on SoundCloud. Um, which do you prefer? Which route? 
would you prefer? Right now, I think... Like right now, you're with a label, This is a good situation, because, like, you know, um, we, we've been on just, like, major labels, mm-hmm. we've been on indie labels, and kind of, um, you know, there was always, like, ups and downs to, to both, you know, like, and then we went in independent for a little bit, did that, and that was great, because then it was like, oh, we could do worldwide releases yeah. like that, we don't need to get the whole company yeah, exactly. and all, it's just, it's, it's crazy how that stuff works. Yeah. Um, but now we're in a cool situation, because we're on, um, it's a major label, but it's also, like, an indie label, yeah. it's Big Beat Records and Atlantic. Yeah. Um, so you get we get like the attention and the care of an indie label, but like the power of a major label. So we get to do what we want. They're not they they let us roll with whatever we want to do. Like they don't question any of the creative stuff, yeah. and they just like basically help us do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. Just make it easier for us. Yeah. Yeah. And you've played a ton of festivals this past summer. Do you have a particular favorite that stands out as a highlight? Well, there was a lot. Um, okay. There was a bunch that surprised us too. Like um, yeah. Firefly in Delaware okay. was probably what, definitely one of our favorites, and we didn't really know what to expect going yeah. into that because it's a really new festival. But it was probably one of the biggest shows we played. It was all an summer. epic night. We just got to yeah. see the Foo Fighters, and yeah, then we literally awesome. just walked across yeah. the field and just. Went yeah, because I want to like because well since we're like. You know, it's our first year kind of playing all these big festivals. We usually planned earlier in the day. And that was one of the ones we got to play, like, late at yeah, night. We're closing yeah. out the festival, and it was, it was amazing. Like, yeah. Lollapalooza was really cool. Yeah. Lollapalooza yeah. was another one that was, yeah. like, surprising. Because we were on, like, a, a side stage, like, a smaller stage. Yeah. It was our first year. But the crowd showed up. and it was Yeah, insane. there was, like, literally, like, yeah. right, 10 minutes before we went on, there was, like, probably 10 people there. And we were yeah. like, oh, my God. this is yeah. suck. I guess there was, like, a, a huge yeah. artist playing right when we were about to play. Yeah. And then, like, a swarm of people. Like, yeah. 10 minutes before we came, mm-hmm. it was, like... Turn, it went from like 10 people to like 30,000 yeah, people. Was, have, have you ever had to run. play for like a crowd that small, like 10, 20, 30 people? Oh, yeah. And how's oh, that feel? Day, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> like, so, how do you kind of deal with that? You're like up on stage and there's only like 20 people there. I mean, for like, you know, that those we, we come from that world of like yeah. being in like, you, you know, gotta start bands, somewhere. Like, yeah, that's right. Sleeping on floors, yeah. Yeah, touring exactly. in bands, oh, you yeah. know, do, doing yeah. that whole scene. So, we're, we're grateful for this. You yeah. know, like, this is just crazy. Every You know, there's not a day that goes by that we're not grateful. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, just looking back, it just it's really it was a really yeah. great experience, yeah. you know. Yeah. I think as far as big shows and small shows, like the back to that question, I, I don't know what I actually really like better because there's something awesome about playing just a small small city. like a yeah. small intimate yeah. crowd, yeah. Like you know, places like Pasha, Webster, yeah, Holmes, exactly. City, those yeah. are just like you know everyone's there for you. So, right? yeah. I mean yeah. you're looking out there and you're seeing faces that we know and it's just exactly. you could feed off the energy. But then there's something about playing a festival like tomorrow, you know. Like, thousands of yeah, people hearing the people sing back your song just like yeah. it hits you like a so, train like, yeah so like on that note like what's it like when you draw Take Me Home and you have like 10,000 people singing yeah. along like what does that feel like it's insane it's just like it's, yeah it's, it's like is it still, is it still like kind of surreal oh, yeah. for you totally like, yeah, every yeah. time it's still like an amazing moment every night yeah so talk about you know playing a show as a band and playing as a DJ. What are the differences? What are the you know what, how do you have to prepare differently? How do you have to interact with the crowd differently? Um, I guess we kind of treat it in a similar way um, I mean, depending on the setting, of course, but like when it's a like a festival or more of a show where it's like you know a, a show where people are there for like you know watching you, not just like a club night or something. Yeah, we definitely treat it the same way. You know, we're there to like you know hype up the crowd, get everyone going. Yeah, definitely get the crowd interaction yeah. going. You know, is there more interaction as DJs or as a traditional band setup or? Kind I'd of say it's pretty much different. Yeah, yeah, it's just a little different, yeah. but it's it's similar. We definitely get out there. You know, we try to work, you know. Should I get do you think you're able to interact more with the crowd when it's a DJ setup since you're not, you know, playing instruments, you don't have to focus on the instruments and, you know, like in between mixing songs, you could kind of... Yeah, it's kind of just like, you know, the cool thing about yeah. DJing is like, you just really got to just like read the crowd. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're there, our, your job, it's like, you, I always say this to DJs, it's like, you can't take it like too, you can't be too pretentious and take yourself too, too seriously. Your job is to like be the party starter. You have to make sure these people have a good time and you got to like, you know, take that into consideration. Yeah. Um, because it's like if you're the only one up there having a good time it's like yeah. what what does so, that do you know? so how much of your set is predetermined then before you get on stage I mean we have a, a bunch of moments you know like a lot of our remixes we like to throw out like uh, Booyah we yeah. always love dropping um you know, our uh, Safe and Sound Capital Cities remix. There's always, like, an idea, like a rough idea. Yeah, there's playlist, yeah. You know? staples, yeah. And then, but, and then the rest you just kind of... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you gotta sure. feel out. You know what I mean? Sometimes we'll go a little harder, yeah. go a little more mainstream, go a little, you know, more, you know, if the crowd, like, is gets excited when you play something brand new, it's like, yeah. you just start there's throwing There's times where we plan, like, playlists yeah. and be like, okay, like, we, we definitely want to work these songs and we would work, like, a general idea of where we're going to go and get there and be like, this is just yeah, not working. Exactly. Like, oh, my God. And just be like, yeah. let's just, you know dial in some other and stuff and pull an audible exactly, and, just, yeah. and that's what helps having two people up there because like, you're wondering you're yeah exactly like, you know, three people, yeah. like 
Um, two people's enough. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So just touching on that, we were talking about that before. So when you only have two people playing, why do you guys only sometimes tour with two and sometimes with three? And when it's only two, where's the third? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so my my brothers, the yeah. other guys, so, here, Alex. Yeah. He, um, I'd say like eighty percent of the time it's me and Sam, yeah. and then maybe like ten percent of the time it's you and Alex. Yeah. And so how do you choose other. which tours? It's just. You know, I think. For uh, like my brother, he likes to work in the studio more, okay. and it's just like me and Sam are just like we're yeah. the lifestyle of just touring. It's just yeah. easier for us, you know. Okay. We get like we get it. it doesn't yeah. like make us run down or anything. Mm -hmm. And um, but it depends. Like if there's something that needs to be, if there's more of a writing thing that yeah. needs to get done, like I'll probably stay back for that. If it's more of a remix thing, maybe maybe Sam yeah. will stay back. If it's something that's more of a mix thing, maybe Alex would stay back. <laughs> so it does depend with that. So when he's in the studio producing a new tour on the road, are you able to work with him making songs? Oh, yeah, totally. Just over yeah. Skype, or yeah. how does that work? Yeah, exactly. It's like usually, Dropbox. usually, yeah, Dropbox, Dropbox and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And like we're home usually at least a couple of days a week, so we'll always get back, you know, yeah. see what's going on. And then yeah, he's always sending us stuff. Yeah. So your studio's back in Jersey, right? Yeah. Because yeah. we'd be touring for like months at a time, and then yeah. come back and be like, well, we have nothing. We have no music. Yeah. We have no remixes. And then we're like, screw that. Let's just leave somebody behind it, yeah. you know, to work on either, either the radio show and edit a remix or something something to start so when we yeah. like we come back home and we're like oh something's been started we could we could wrap it up you know or if we start something and then we need to leave we'll finish it while we're gone that makes sense so yeah speaking of remixes you guys have done a ton of huge remixes do you typically approach the artist or do the artist approach you typically for remixes um 50 50 50 yeah, 50, yeah. 50, 50 yeah if there's a song we really love we'll definitely mm -hmm. hit up the artist and be like send us vocals yeah. send us yeah. stems you know and then yeah a bunch of times uh, labels have just come to us and the artists have come to us and asked us to do a remix so. Yeah. so what do you look for in a song that you want to remix for me it's the vocal if I think it's yeah. something there yeah. but sometimes there's a musical thing that you'd be like oh this could be the one that, yeah. you know, like, we should do this one but. yeah if it's something special in there that like it's something a lot of times if it's like something we want to play in our sets you know mm -hmm. like something's like oh man that would be a great moment for us I do a remix of like a yeah. big voice like yeah. a Bruno Mars like yeah. that was yeah. awesome we did the treasure yeah. remix like that was a no-brainer for us. A lot of times, like majors will hit us up and they'll be like, you know, remix this this uh, artist we just signed and you never, you never even heard yeah. of him. Yeah. And it's like, it's like get, the money's like through the roof, yeah. and it's like, no, it's just not yeah, worth exactly. it. It's yeah. like not worth the time. It's not worth the energy, yeah. and you don't, you don't want to remix something you don't like because yeah. then you're, you're not people your are gonna be playing it. that, yeah. and then if, you know you want to be like uh, not you want to be like ashamed of something yeah. you put yeah. out, you know. Yeah. So is there anything that you really want to remix that you haven't yet? Any songs in particular that um, you have your eye there on? Was, we had a chance to do a Chromeo remix, oh, no, but okay. we were just like, it was right at the beginning of the summer. Which we one? Just, jealous. Uh, yeah, for yes. Jealous. And we were bummed. Like, that's one of the artists we always want to work with, yeah. you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm sure we'll get something with him yeah. eventually, but yeah, that was one that we kind of, we just didn't have time for. Yeah. We just did a Bastille yeah. remix, though. That's yeah, yeah which one? It's, it's a single they didn't even release oh, yet. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. When, when can we hear that? Probably in a couple months. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. It should be coming out soon. soon. And how did the uh, Corella Alive one come about? Because that's one of my favorite remixes. Yeah, by the guys. So did they contact Same. you for that? That was that came from the label, and that's okay. a cool story yeah. too. Because so that was just a label thing that we got in our inbox, and we were like, "Oh, like hell yeah, this is a no-brainer." Yeah. The song was like just starting to pick up, yeah. and we were like, "Great song, like yeah. great vibe." So we remixed that, and then uh, I think I like I don't even was my. Uh, it was like on uh, Facebook. I think I hit up the girls to send yeah. it to them. I'm like, oh, and then they they were like, oh, like you know, we, we love you guys. Like you know, we've, we've been a fan of your band since back in the day, yeah. and they really knew about us. And we were like, let's let's do more together. Like yeah. they 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 loved the remix so much, so we did uh, live for the night. Yeah. So have you worked with them in person or just all over? Yeah. The internet? Yeah. 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 Super talented. They're so talented. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, yeah. we're I've just with them before. last night. Oh, yeah? yeah. Yeah. Playing a uh, life and color. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How was that? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy. yeah. 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 They're cool too because they're just trying new stuff right yeah. now. Like they were talking about how they're just doing like new stuff and just yeah. trying to be no, you know, great. free and yeah. I like that. Um, so when you're going to remix a song in the studio, how does the production process differ from when you're making an original track? I mean, other than the fact that you already have something to work with, how does your you know production process differ? Um, I think, if it differs, yeah, I think a lot of times the production process, um, like we'll go into a remix with a little more. Um, spontaneity in a way because it's like the song's already there so like we're pulling elements we don't have to worry about the songwriting aspect as much yeah. so we'll kind of go in there with more of like how do we want this to sound like yeah, sound like design. we'll, we'll try to push the envelope a little more because usually for an original we try to focus on the song yeah. first so it's like um but yeah for a remix it's usually where you're trying to push the boundaries and like create something new that uh you know that we haven't done before and how strict are you about kind of keeping the heart of the song intact 
yeah, like you still yeah, wanted to remain it like yeah for sure I think that's like goes back to like what kind of remixes we like to do like yeah. Yeah. we always like to keep that one element that we that drew us to the song in the first place mm-hmm. sometimes it's cool yeah. to completely just yeah, take just it just destroy it, it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. like for sure. uh, what they, like the Icona Pop one kind yeah. of was like yeah. way out there but exactly. then like the Bruno Mars Treasure remix it like it's really kind of just like took the original and just like yeah. hyped it up yeah. and exactly. just like set it on fire you know but it, it kept that kind of like disco yeah. feel and um, that's why yeah, yeah it depends so when you're in the studio, do you each have kind of different tasks that you delegate between you three, or you kind of all work together on the same stuff? Yeah, yeah. I think we definitely shine in different aspects. Yeah. But so what, what are all your, over. what are your strengths? What are your we all know how to use like the software. Yeah, so, of course. Like, that's the whole thing is like we start, we didn't have anybody teaching us. Yeah. It was like me and Sam in high yeah. school just being like, we don't Playing want to pay around. local yeah. producers yeah. to record yeah. a crappy garage band. Let's yeah. just do this ourselves. Yeah. So we bought a couple of interfaces, got some speakers and yeah. preamps and all that and learned how to do it. Um, and then my brother got old enough. Mm-hmm. Where we were like, let's put him in the group. So then he uh, and he shined in his own way too, because yeah. he's a piano player. Okay. So he was just bringing a whole new different side of things, like just with the music theory that he knew, and mm-hmm. um, and like, like you know, I, I was really into you know mixing and sound design, and I kind of like, we kind of like we were kind of just trade things, and then Sam's you know great with drums and and yeah. everything, and just kind of yeah. took it from there. So now that you guys are kind of entrenched in the EDM scene, are there any DJs in particular that you really want to work with? Or collaborate with oh yeah there's like a, a ton of like who's kind of people. on your dream yeah. list right now um well, I'm trying to think um I know we're always we've been TGR. talking yeah we've been talking yeah. to TGR we're talking to Dylan Francis for like months over yeah. Twitter I yeah. I'll probably get something going with him um yeah, there's a bunch I mean we always wanted to do something with Nicky Romero yeah. we talked about there and, yeah. you know we both have like enough time to sit down and yeah. do something Tritonal too those yeah, yeah Tritonal, Tritonal. Well, yeah. they remixed Surrender yeah right? I love yeah. the remix oh. Mike down yeah Mike down <laughs> did that just go down yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, has it been now? It's okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So just before we wrap up, um, yeah. what can we expect from you guys in terms of upcoming music? Any more singles before the end of the year? I know you mentioned a new album earlier. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, we're working towards an album right okay. now. We're just kind of go song by song. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We have a bunch of stuff coming out. We got a bunch of collaborations that we're figuring out release dates for. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get a few few new things coming out before the end of the year. And right now, we're just yeah. kind of focusing on surrender. We got a yeah. video for that. It's going to be insane. Yeah. Really. Cool. When's that? Coming out. Weird. Hopefully th- within a month. It's just yeah. like we're sorting through footage right now. Yeah. Just like we're re- and we're really hands on with it. Which yeah, is cool. yeah, like, yeah. We're, we're doing scenes. We shot the video. Yeah. This guy Roy, yeah. um, he's like a random dude. Yeah, he got, he's, he's uh, just really, stuff. Yeah. Okay. He has a really cool crew. Yeah, he's amazing. His work is yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's just really weird. He brought he brought some weird shit. Yeah, yeah. looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah, well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, man.